Hello everyone and welcome to the fourth video in a 3dbuzz.com series on a side-scrolling beat-em-up game. In this video we are going to be implementing the implementation plan created for phase one base game setup. By the end of this video we're going to be able to run our application from within Visual Studio that's going to start us off on our title screen and a way to just press the start button to move on to the main menu. On the main menu there's going to be three menu items for us to navigate around. There's going to be play game, how to play and exit. Activating the exit button will close our application. How to play, activating the how to play button will take us to the how to play screen where we'll just have how to play and when you click a button you'll go back onto the main menu. Choosing play game will take us over to the actual game itself. In our case there's going to be no way of getting back from playing the game to the main menu yet that's going to be implemented in later videos. So let's go ahead and get started. Open up Visual Studio, start a new project and call it side scrolling beat em up. Yeah, I spelt everything correctly. Good eye. And when it starts up, first thing is we'll get ourselves some good structure going here. So classes. Hey. Why didn't it go ahead and rename this folder for me? Why are you deleting things? I said rename. There we go. We're off to a good start. Add a new folder into the content directory. Textures. Add a new folder. Sounds in the wrong spot, of course, and add a new folder for music. Now let's drag sounds into content and delete it out of here because you don't want it. That took longer than it should have. <laughs> let's make the classes that we need. So add a new item. We're going to need ourselves a game manager. We are going to need ourselves a input helper. Going to also need to have a menu manager and a level class as well. Level. There we go. We'll leave all the cleanup for those ones for just a moment. First off, Let's work on making our game one class do what it needs to. So we need to have a public const int screen width. And 600 for the screen height. There, good there. We needed to have a second sprite batch for sprite batch HUD. We need to have our two fonts, a font small and a font large. We need to have our texture 2D, static texture 2D. Naming convention is going to be anything that is a sprite starts with SPR single pixel and I spelt single pixel with a P in there I'm gonna do that so many times I have no idea why when I'm typing single I put a P in it my finger just wants to press that P button for pixel it's very strange uh, we need to have ourselves a static bool exit game which will exit the game when we need to uh, what else do we need here? Anything else? No, that's all that stuff there set up. Let's go down to initialize where we set a few things up how we want them. Away. Exit game is going to be false because we don't want to be exiting the game at the start. This one's more for me. Is mouse visible equal to true just so I can see where I'm pointing and give ourselves a window dot title equals side scrolling Beat them up. Yeah, call your game whatever you'd like to. Give it a fancy title if you'd like to. Let me know what kind of cool names you can come up for this as we go. That'd be fun. Let's load in some content. Well, before we can load in the content, we'd better actually add it into our game. 
sorry, textures, add existing item. I've got a nice little working folder set up over here. In this case, there's only one thing we're adding into, which is the single pixel. Well, single thing that we're adding, which is already existing. Let's add in two fonts. We'll have one for 24 size and rename that to, okay, it's my mouse. My mouse likes to double click. Ugh. going to be small, be small. We're going to need another sprite font as well, which we'll call font large. And I can't remember what size I set it up to. I'm going to make it 74 because I think that's what it was. If we need to, we can come back and set it up and change those figures later. Why do we have two sprite fonts? Well, if you make a, take a small font, let's say size 14, and you needed to take up a quarter of the screen, then you're going to be expanding a bitmap image, I guess you could say, which will be giving you a very pixelated image and not look very nice. So if we ever want large text, we can have our large size font looking pretty. Font large equal to content dot load sprite font textures your textures font large yeah, content <laughs> content type properly Richard as we well take this line as well and use it for our sprite font uh, for our single pixel I should say uh, single pixel. No, did it again. Stupid. Text to 2D, which is single pixel. Yeah, I'm not trying to be funny by doing that. I do it every time. I'm yeah, driving me insane by doing it so much. Uh, unload content. I don't need. I'll just hide it. Okay, so we want to. Normally, you can exit the game by pressing the back button on the gamepad. I'm going to leave that in there, but I'm also going to set up it to use exit game. If exit game is true, then quit it as well. Great, that'll be everything we need there. Now, in here, we want to go game manager dot update and pass in game time. So let's look at what the game manager class does. We go into it. First off, clearing up these things. Well, I need the last two. Just you I didn't need. Using Microsoft.xna.framework. Dot input. Look, graphics. May as well quickly steal these and pass them to the other classes as well. Input helper. This mouse hates me also very much. And into the level class. Level class doesn't really need input for the moment, but we'll give it to it. David's putting it in later. Game manager class does not need classes on it. It is a static class. And inside the game manager class, what we need to have is our enum. Enum game state. And we said there would be three states. There would be main menu. Uh, play and playing. But what about the title screen? Well, the title screen is actually going to be taken care of inside the main menu class. We'll get into that in the next video when we set up some different graphics for these to make them look a bit prettier and give them the overall theme that we want this game to have. So, public static game state game state equal to game state dot main menu. Sound like a skipping record. 
public static list of type level conveniently called levels equal to a new list of type level so this contains all the different levels of our game and of course to be able to do that or to have an easier way of keeping track of which one we're going to be in we have an int called current level and we equal it to zero because we're on the first one I don't like that error there so I'm just going to quickly clean up the level class and that takes care of you so we had a public static update and a draw call update which takes in game time don't like typing in game time every time so I call it GT GT for game time not Gran Turismo public static void draw sprite batch I do the same thing for sprite batch especially when I've got two of them SB and SB HUD Now the update is one giant switch statement. Switch game state. And we have case game state dot main menu break two three. There dot how to play. And stop playing. Let's steal this entire thing. And um, yep, this mouse hates me. I need a new mouse. I'm gonna go buy one tomorrow, I think. It's getting to me with that auto double click that I don't want it to be doing. Okay. So on to the main menu. Let's have menu manager dot update because all it really does is pass this control over to the menu manager, which I've spelt incorrectly. And he's now spelt correctly, but it gives me an error. Why did I press enter? My typing skills are very bad tonight. Here we go. So on a how to play screen, we will await input to go back to the menu, to the main menu, and in playing update the level. We'll leave that on for when we've actually got something in there, a level to update. Over to the menu manager class, which we'll get rid of classes, and we'll make it static. Now the menu manager, as I was saying, takes care of itself and also takes care of the title screen. So we better give an in for that. calling it menu state, not title screen. One of its states is title screen. Class manager. Well, the menu manager has menu items on it. So let's make a struct for them. And all they really have is a string for text vector 2 for position better give it a constructor which is public menu item takes in a string called text and a vector 2 for position I think you can see where I'm going with this this dot text equal to text this dot position equal to position and draw call public void draw it doesn't need any kind of updating just wants to draw itself sprite batch it's going to take in sb hud we'll get into that one in just a second color draw color takes in a draw color because it needs to know if it is selected or not and that is all handled by the menu manager class itself so in here we call sprite batch hud Draw. Reason I'm using our HUD one, our HUD sprite batch here, and not the normal one, is the sprite batch itself is going to be using the layer depths, and I don't really want to have to type in, give it a texture and a rectangle and a source rectangle and a color 
and a rotation and an origin if we wanted to a scale and a sprite effects. No, I just want to be able to say this. Game one dot font small text position draw color. There are far more reasons than that, which we get into when we actually start using the other two. When we start using the mm, sprite bash with layer depth. Why do I have a problem? Because it's draw, not draw string. It's good now though. Go away. <laughs> That'll fix you. Okay, so the menu managers, update to call. Well, not the update, let's look at what's actually got in it first. Right here, we need to have a color. Or a static color, I should say. After all, it is part of a static class. Standard equal to color dot white. So if our menu item is not selected, it will be drawing itself in the white color. Static color color selected equal to color dot. If it is selected, I want it to be light blue. And let's clean these up so that they're not capitalized because they're privates. That's those. We need to have a static list of type menu item called menu items. New list of type menu item. We don't need to have a, a constructor for the static class. It's all going to be making itself when it makes the menu items in the update or in the initialize method of the game one class. Static int current menu item equal to zero and mm, public static menu state equal to well, menu state equal to menu state dot title screen. So when we start the game it's going to be starting on the title screen. Public static void date doesn't need to take in the game time public static void Draw does take in the sprite match HUD. Which should we be getting from the game managed class? Once again, we are using a switch. Switch statements are great. There's probably going to be another two or three, possibly even four in this video alone. Menu state case menu state dot title screen break case menu state dot main menu break so on the title screen we await input to move on to the main menu on the main menu we can navigate the menu and we can activate the menu items menu item actions so let's go ahead and get this thing here working which means looking at the input helper input helper doesn't need that it is a static class now, as I was saying when writing up the original implementation for this game we're going to be I'm going to be making it so it can has control for both the keyboard and for the gamepad itself. So let's make the first one the gamepad helper, which is going to need to have a integer. Private const int number of players equal to four. So we're setting this game up right from the bat to be able to take four players. I'm only going to be making it for the game is going to pretty much only use one, though you can go ahead and make it for multiplayers if you want. Once you've got one player done, just put player index dot two in there. Second player. Nice. Public static gamepad state. Oh, gamepad state. Really not going to be explaining this one too much, just going to be typing here. I figure if you can do this video, you're taking it on your 
probably more than likely have some idea of how to do some other things with inputs and probably know all about this public static of input state and make it state. now I'm going to get confused by putting OGS and OKS so I'm going to summarize these ones old gamepad states feed me a player index cast to an int org old New gamepad. Gamepad. Old keyboard state. New keyboard state. Alright, yeah, so we need to have a public static void method called update states which will update the input device states and how does it do this? pretty simply just going to loop through all the different gamepads we've got and then update the keyboard. So update gamepads for eh. for in i i less than number of players old gamepad state i equal to new gamepad state i so old to new and then the new update the old state with the new state and then update the new state with the latest new gamepad state i gamepad state takes in a player index but we can go ahead and take an int and cast it to a player index nice What's wrong with you? Ah, he did that. Go away. That's better. Update keyboard states. Old keyboard state equal to new keyboard state. New keyboard state equal to keyboard dot get state. And now we need to check for button presses. Public static bool was button pressed player index player index buttons buttons so we can check radio which of our four gamepad help gamepad states are we checking for inside our array of four with the player index and which button are we actually checking as well return new gamepad state int cast our player index do an int is button down button and old gamepad state and layer index dot is button up button boom pass me back there cool, cool. Uh, that's the gamepad helper that's essentially all we need for the gamepad helper so let's check the keyboard, the keyboard and what keys were pressed public static bool 
was key pressed. Keys key. And return. Oh, no, let's check the new one is down. New keyboard state dot is key down key and old keyboard state dot are you up in the last one key well then we know that the keyboard that button on the keyboard was just pressed and finally let's check for if we've held the button down public static bool is key held keys key return new keyboard state dot is key down B yeah and that pretty much sums up our input helper as much as we need to so let's go back on to the menu manager where we just were before and check out the title screen so on the title screen of the menu manager we're going to see have we just pressed the button if so go over to the main menu if input helper dot was button pressed okay was the A button pressed or What about the start button? Or... But the, what about the space bar on the keyboard? Was well, key pressed, key start space. I'm gonna make it space, that's the pretty logical begin thing for me. Other people might when you press enter, or the A button, or the shift key, or the control key, or god forbid the alt key if you really felt like it. Not God forbid, but I've just never seen the alt key used in that fashion. Now, if you do press that, then the menu state needs to switch itself over to the main menu. And game manager. Game manager doesn't need to create levels. Why have I got that there? Let's just leave it at that. That's all you need to do for now. Down to menu navigation. So here we're going to check for the up and down arrow keys on the keyboard and the thumbsticks getting pushed up or down on the gamepad or the up and down d-pad. People still want to use the d-pads. Okay, if input helper dot was button pressed, layer index 1. Buttons dot D pad up. Where's up? There it is. Or let's keep the other conventions. Or input helper dot. We'll do the new game gamepad states first. New gamepad state. Bam int. Yeah, what's play index dot one? What was I thinking? Once one dot thumb sticks dot left dot y zero point three and Copy this entire line, put it there, close. Bigger than that. What we're checking here is the thumbsticks. Was the thumbstick just pressed up over the 0 0.3 on the new update? And on the last update, was it not quite over the limit of 0 0.3? And that gets those ones there done, but you also want to do the keypad, keyboard, or input helper dot new well, not in any of that just dot was key pressed keys dot up 
close, finishes off there, finishes off there. We know we've got the right one, set ourselves up a thingy. So if we do, we know that the pressing the up arrow is going to take us up the list. So we'll say current menu item minus minus if current menu item is less than zero. So if we've gone up too far, we need to loop back down to the bottom of the list. Current menu item equal to menu items dot count, but we can't go for count because it's a zero based, so we'd better minus one off there to make sure it fits. And that works perfectly fine. Now that's the up for, of the navigation. What about down? Good thing is we can just copy and paste this. down to change up to a down we just have to make it a negative and keys dot down make you a plus and this one's different we go bigger than if current menu item is bigger than or equal to menu items dot count so if you've gone to the menu item that means you've gone down zero one two press it again, that's going to be 3, you've gone to count, well that's higher than the 0, 1, 2 because it's a zero based list, so we go back to the start. Current menu item equals a 0. And that's that. Okay, menu actions. This one here is a little different. We're going to use another switch statement, that's right, nested switch statements. They're great. Which means we go if input helper dot was button pressed player index dot one buttons dot a or input helper dot was key pressed keys dot space close what to do, how to activate these things, switch current menu item. Now we are simply going to do this by checking which current menu item we've got selected. So that does mean hard coding in this case zero break. One and two. Wow. Roll paste, there we go. Two, one. We could go ahead and change this to say current menu item dot text and if you wanted to, and then have this one here checking begin game. Entirely up to you. I just think it's easier to do it this way because I know what my order of buttons are. And I can do things like this. Begin game. Up play. Exit game. So if we are on the begin game menu item and we action it by pressing space or the A button on the keyboard or the gamepad, we're going to say game manager. It's about time you started playing. Exit game state dot playing. Click on the how to play screen, we're going to tell a game manager you should be on the how to play screen right now. But it doesn't have one for exit. This one here we say game one dot exit game and that takes us to the game one method which we'll create right now. Down below the draw. Which is a public static void exit game which grabs exit game and sets it to true 
next time we run the update, which will be very quickly, which won't do anything else in the game, essentially, he is going to go ahead and exit the game. Boom. Quickly save things, make sure we haven't got anything new. Back into the game manager, the menu manager, what else have we got missing here? We've got everything activating itself. That's good. Let's check out its draw. Which, what does it need to do? Same thing as before, another switch. Menu state. Case, menu state dot. Title screen break. Main menu. What we could also have here is a public static void with menu items. Let's make them. So we know we want to have three menu items. Menu items dot add new menu item do that one. We want to say begin game. New vector two. Let me just check where our positions were on these ones. Don't want them pointing in weird and wonderful random wacky spots. Here we go. 45, 50 from the notes. Close off the add, add, add. Copy him. Two, three. Add play. And exit game. Okay, five, one twenty, and one ninety. I just happen to know I want them all spaced apart by such an amount. Okay, that should be our updating of the menu manager done for now. So let's go back into the game manager, check out what it needs to do. Radio, how to play, it needs to await input. Well, we can steal that from the menu manager class. Keeping actions the same, don't make buttons different all of a sudden. That really annoys me when games have different buttons to do things. We'll say game manager dot game state equal to game state dot main menu. Take me back to the menu because I'm ready to play. I know how to play the game after looking at the how to play screen. Playing, you better upload the level, which will be level z this dot current level dot update and it'll take in game time which we call GT. Oh yeah, divide a level by the time. Yeah, nice. Dot. Well level doesn't have an update yet. Let's give it something. Click void update and public void Raw, Sprite Batch, SB, and Sprite Batch, SB, HUD. It's going to be using both of them to draw all of its different things onto the screen. It is not something to be used like that. There we go. We might as well set this one here's draw up at least. Uh, the level, we just wanted to say we're playing now, so that's going to be sb hard dot draw string game one dot font. Let's use small one text playing game new vector two. Where should we put this one? Yeah, let's put it at 2020. No, 2150. Sounds more exotic. Color dot white. Now what we also want to do is we're going to make sure each of the different states, all each of the different screens that we had, is going to have its own different color to be showing us so we know where we are. So we'll say SB HUD dot draw 
game one dot SBR single pixel new rectangle which is going to be zero zero essentially take up the entire screen well not essentially it does game one dot width game one dot screen height color dot dark red hey I just realized I typed in single pixel correctly but then I did use IntelliSense for that maybe that's why in fact not maybe let's just go with that's what it is on to menu manager menu manager has got its update all set up here yes 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 it does good yep uh, title screen what do we want it to draw well from the title screen we want it to tell us if you are on the title screen to be pressing the start button to begin so sb hand dot draw string game one dot let's use the large one title screen new vector to 187 100 making up figures there as I go color dot white sb hard dot draw string game one dot font large but large large I think large will do not large large press start Uh, let's move it in a little further and make it a little lower. Okay, from the main menu, we want to loop through all of our menu items and draw which one is the selected one for each, or not just for each, just for menu items dot count if I equals current menu item then we say menu items i dot draw pass it in sprite match hud and we know it's currently selected so pass it in the selected color else you're not selected you're one of the standards So use the standard color, which was white. Save everything there. What haven't we done yet? The menu manager is essentially complete. The input help is done. Game manager isn't quite drawing itself yet, and the update doesn't have a the level doesn't have an update. Well, it does. It's not taking in game time. GT. GT. Close bracket. Thank you. Levels fixed for now, menu manager, input helper, game manager is not done. It needs to be drawing properly. If it's on the main menu main menu, then we need to say menu manager dot draw. Which one do you want? You want SP HUD? Well you may have SP HUD. If we're on the how to play screen, we want to draw some text to the screen that says how to play. SB HUD dot draw string game one dot font small string text how to play screen new vector 2 let's say 179 not quite 180 and we'll put it at the bottom so 540 color dot white we are on this screen we do want to have a bit of a different colored background so sb hud dot draw game one dot sbr single pixel new rectangle zero zero game one dot screen width game one dot screen height color dot dark green that's that done now from the playing then we pass it off to the level to draw itself so levels current level 
dot draw takes in sprite batch and sprite batch HUD it may indeed have them because it has use for them in the future that's the game manager class taken care of I believe into game one now where we need to update our input helper uh, that would not have been a very good thing to not have done that's the game manage the update states and now for the drawing of the entire game now what we're going to do here is set up both of the sprite batches so let's check out sprite batch dot begin not the not the hard one just standard the original one normally you'd be able to go close but in our case we're not doing that we're going to go down to here using this one I'm not going to explain what all these mean we're going to get into that and play around with them when we look at layer depths so sprite blend mode dot alpha just accept these for now. Sprite sort mode is back to front. Save state mode is set to none. And we can say sprite batch HUD dot begin. And it doesn't need layer depth, so we can just sit like that. Game manager manager dot draw wants sprite batch and sprite batch HUD well, that kind of backfired on me didn't it and then we need to end the two sprite batch dot end and sprite batch HUD dot end so what this does is when you call the end that's when it actually gets drawn so if, if we were to have this here we had all these non layer depth things drawing, we drew the HUD, and then we drew the actors in the world that they fight around in, then we'd essentially be drawing all of them over the actual HUD itself and wouldn't be able to see it. So by putting this here instead, we then draw everything from the entire game world, and then we draw the HUD on top of it and can see everything. Now that, I believe, is everything we need. There's probably going to be something I missed, but let's hope there isn't and go for it and press the play button. And everything comes to a grinding halt when it gets to the Sprite Batch HUD begin. What was wrong with you? I forgot to load you in the graphics. Ha! Nice. Sprite Batch HUD equal to new Sprite Batch graphics device. <laughs> very good, very good indeed. Just going to build it, make sure everything builds okay, build succeeded, run that game, and how do we go? Oh yes, it's on my other monitor. Nice, let's just pull it across over here. Why do I get the feeling I'm going to have to do that a lot, or swap to the other monitor as the main? Radio. so press start. There we are. Something's gone wrong straight away because we're not drawing our menu items. So game manager in the pressing that menu manager pressing that goes to where oh we never actually made the create we never created the menu items. Silly me, silly, silly, silly me. Someone's probably sitting back there laughing at me, going, ye fool, stupid Australians. Menu manager dot create menu items. There we go. Gonna get another error when we actually tell it to start playing as well. I've just realised. So we've got begin game, how to play an exit game, exit game. Whoops, wrong monitor. <laughs> very nice, very nice indeed. Begin game, how to play exit game, exit game, exit the game, just like we wanted it to. Press that, bring it back across. Get in there. We can go to how to play screen, how to play <laughs> off screen. <laughs> nice. Bring it back. Begin game will give us an error because we forgot to actually make a level anywhere. So let's quickly make a level. We'll do it below you. Public static. Create level. Nice, public static. 
void create level. We'll say game manager dot levels dot add new level. That's all it needs. One, two, done. Run that program again. Let me pull this across from the other screen again. Press start. Go. How to play. How to play screen. Begin game. Take me into... Now what have you got wrong? Out of range. We've got to call it from somewhere. That could be handy as well. Nice, nice, nice. Let's say if you action begin game. Then we'll say game one dot create level. Third time's a charm. Bring it in. Press start. How to play works. Exit game. You know works. And begin game takes me to playing the game. Yes! <laughs> Except it's red, which kind of like gives you this sense of stop, which the game has essentially done because we can't do anything. And on that note of stopping, that's where this video is going to end because we now have phase one complete. We've gone from the title screen to the main menu, got our three menu items going there. We can go to the how to play screen, we can exit the game, and we can get to the play game. So looking on to the next phase of implementation, we have got to create a larger level, which means we'll be getting the camera class going in there, and we'll get some kind of actor class set up that we can use to move around in the level. And that is all for this one. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the phase two implementation plan of creating a larger level. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.